Does Red Bull only design its Formula 1 cars to suit Max Verstappen? Is that favouritism and focus making him look better than he is? And how much does that hold Red Bull back? Those questions are at the heart of the main theories peddled by those who seek to undermine the quality of Red Bull's prize asset or attack the way in which the team panders to Verstappen's needs. They also assume the struggles of Verstappen's recent teammates to replicate what he does are because the cars only respond to his aggressive, unique driving style. But this overlooks how Verstappen has been carefully moulded into a world-class driver and why that manifests itself whether he's driving a tricky car or a very good one. So let's explore Verstappen's prowess at Red Bull, the struggles of his teammates to match him and why it actually has little to do with one particular driving style. The Verstappen myth Some believe Red Bull is so focused on designing a car around Verstappen it makes it impossible for others like Pierre Gasly or Alex Albon to do as well with it. Either Red Bull is building the car Verstappen needs and that's too leery for others to handle, or Red Bull keeps trying and failing to create that car for Verstappen, and that comes at the expense of something easier for both its drivers to control. But Verstappen is actually a red herring in this. First, because the theory that Red Bull is prioritising Verstappen's needs overlooks the fact that Verstappen doesn't want a car that's often several tenths slower than a Mercedes, prone to aerodynamic stall at the rear, and spins at low speed. But it's also because the struggles of Gasly and Albon are rooted in their own shortcomings as drivers, especially when compared to Verstappen. So Red Bull seeding to a supposed Verstappen driving style is a myth, as is the idea of a specific Verstappen driving style itself. We've had this very conversation with Verstappen, and this is what he said. I think as a driver, you would, it doesn't matter if you have an understeery car, oversteery car, slippery surface, grippy surface, you constantly adjust your driving style, I think, to that. Because to just say, this is my driving style and this is how it's going to be, you will not be quick. It's every weekend, you know, constantly you are adjusting your driving style a little bit to, to make sure that, you know, the car is working well. And of course, you try to set the car to your liking, but it will never be fully to your liking, you know, so you always have to fight you. So, so you try it, and that's what, at the end of the day, makes a driver fast. Verstappen's an aggressive and confident driver, but in its simplest form, what he wants is a car that's quick, that has good grip to attack a corner with, and a predictable rear end that allows him to do so with confidence he's not going to be spat out the other side. So if Red Bull was really giving Verstappen what he wants or needs, chances are it would suit most other drivers as well. Instead, Red Bull's 2020 car was capricious at best, and Verstappen simply handled it better than Albon could, just like he did in 2019 against Gasly. And the reason why is a mark of how good Verstappen really is. The trait that's second nature to Verstappen. Adaptability is Verstappen's biggest weapon, and that's a trait he shares with the best drivers in F1 history. If the great share one defining trait, it's their capacity to handle different situations and adapt to what is required in each moment. In short, they have a wider operating window, and so does Verstappen. What he's learned in F1 has been layered onto years and years of knowledge gained from his karting career. His rise in car racing was prodigiously, freakishly fast, just the one season in European Formula 3 before his F1 race debut, but he didn't just enter F3 from nowhere. He'd spent an awful long time driving karts, winning at the highest level against much older and more established opposition. Even now, with six seasons of F1 under his belt, Verstappen's Grand Prix racing stint is less than half his total racing career. And Verstappen's ability comes from his intuition, which in turn a legacy of years of relentless preparation and practice has created. So when he finds himself dealing with a skittish rear end or in greasy conditions or driving through rivers like in the 2016 Brazilian Grand Prix, he's got an extraordinary bank of data to use to handle those challenges and he can access that data bank automatically. It's why he handles these situations better than most and why even if a data overlay of a given lap or a comparison of a race stint might have shown Gasly or Albon where Verstappen was quicker and a binary idea of what he was doing to be quicker, it doesn't fully account for how he was doing it. Driving a car is a dynamic process with multiple inputs and countless adjustments. It's an immensely complicated sensory puzzle and piecing it all together through conscious thought is difficult if not impossible. Most of what makes Verstappen so effective is happening on an unconscious level. Trying to get Verstappen to explicitly talk through what he does and how would be like using only words to try to teach someone how to walk. So what can lazily be described as Verstappen's driving style is far more complex than that. 
He doesn't have one way of driving, he has the skills required to drive in multiple different ways and is building more and more experience to know what way works best in any given moment. That manifests itself in such delicate, refined inputs that most drivers can see what he's doing and get close to replicating it, but can't quite exactly do the same. This is what's second nature to Verstappen now and why the speed seems to come so effortlessly. So is he now the full package? In 2020, Verstappen augmented his obvious pace with further gains in maturity and judgment. This is a vital secondary trait that will, car permitting, allow Verstappen to translate his performance into championships. His racecraft seems better than ever and he thinks his progress is now down to micro developments, but pinpoints consistency as a clear improvement in 2020, such as making the right decision on the opening lap or in pressure moments. Verstappen still doesn't get everything right, as the spin in the Turkish Grand Prix chasing Sergio Perez showed, but he has readily acknowledged with us that he even had a different mindset in 2020, realising he did not need to risk 110% all the time because he often had at least the second fastest car and knew that a top three finish was likely, even with a bad start or a lost position. It's a mark of how Verstappen has grown up in the last couple of seasons, given this is the same young man who was adamant in early 2018 that he didn't need to change his approach, after getting into a spate of incidents while taking too many risks. In fact, back in 2018, Verstappen got so irate he jokingly, or should that be only half jokingly, said he'd headbutt someone if he kept getting asked about it. Verstappen still got a bit of a spark and maybe even some volatility about him off track. He can turn quite quickly if he feels things aren't in his favour, but there are few drivers who can keep a lid on every emotion. Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo all spring to mind as blowing their tops in different ways and for different reasons in recent years. What was noticeable in 2020 was how Verstappen was able to shrug off any potential victim complex once it became clear Red Bull's title challenge was effectively dead on arrival. And he channeled any frustration into a season of relentless consistency despite a car that looked quite wild at times. Verstappen essentially made peace with his situation in 2020, and that seemed to smooth out the worst of his remaining rough edges. Whatever's been coded into his brain throughout his driving career is now being supported by a layer of rationality that comes with experience of F1 itself. Essentially, while his deep-rooted qualities have made him capable of the spectacular from the first moment he drove a Formula 1 car, his added experience and maturity have enabled him to convert that consistently into top results. And that has little to do with a specific driving style, in fact, it's quite the opposite. But what do you make of Verstappen's ability as a Formula 1 driver, and do you think he's capable of winning a world championship in a straight fight against Lewis Hamilton? Make sure you let us know in the comments, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the race if you've not already done so.